Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome to Up With Creme. We're so glad you're joining us here on this Tuesday. I'm Tim Pham. Let's head on over to meteorologist Thomas Patrick with a more detailed look at today's weather forecast because Thomas, we know the Quincy School District is delayed because of weather this morning. So what's going on in our region? Yeah, we have some patchy fog and it has been worse off over central Washington for this morning. But even here in Spokane, some areas are getting some pretty intense fog like out at the airport. I remember from my drive to work, which was several hours ago at this point, was also a little bit foggy as well. So there's that live picture over downtown. You're probably saying, oh, that's just a typical cloudy overcast kind of day. But the visibility is a lot worse as you head west towards the airport where it is a half mile visibility. The cameras near Geiger Road and the uh, on the way to Medical Lake are actually even worse than that. And then you continue out towards Central Washington where Moses Lake actually has had an improvement to now a half mile visibility. Quarter mile visibility being reported in Ellensburg, Winthrop, Lookout Pass, as well as Lewiston. So it is very patchy, but but intense where that fog has developed. The one area that definitely doesn't have fog is Pullman. Your skies are a little bit more clear and thus you're a little bit colder than everywhere else. You're sitting at 26 degrees right now compared to 34 in Coeur d'Alene and you're right at the freezing mark out in Moses Lake. So some of that fog could be a freezing fog. The areas that are getting fog could linger uh, could experience those conditions till about 9 or 10 o'clock this morning and then just overcast and cloudy skies for the remainder of the day. As we told you at the top of the show, we have one school delay to report this morning. Quincy School District announcing they're on a two hour delay because of hazardous road conditions caused by freezing fog. If there are any more school delays, we will be sure to bring those to you here on Up With Creme and on Creme.com. Happening today, Washington state lawmakers will hold a hearing over a proposal to create a new cold case unit. It would specifically tackle cases involving missing and murdered indigenous women and people. If approved, the unit would operate within the Washington Attorney General's office. It would include a five person team with dedicated investigators and family liaisons. Those Native American voices of women who've been lost, they're now heard. Uh, those who have gone missing, they're now heard. Those who've gone murdered are now heard. And this really, for me, shows how the values of Washington state rises in our legislative work that we do. Federal data shows Native American women are murdered at rates 10 times the national average in some areas. The AG's office identified 113 unsolved cases where the victim is indigenous. The state of Washington, Washington is taking a look at potentially lowering its legal blood alcohol level for drivers getting behind the wheel. A new bill introduced the state to the state legislature is trying to drop the number of DUI cases that law enforcement deals with. Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones has more on what changes there would be if the bill is passed. Yeah, the major difference we would see is that blood alcohol level dropping down to 0.05%. And that's a number we've only seen the state of Utah enforce in the country. Yesterday in Olympia, Senate Bill 5002 was discussed in a committee meeting. There's still some work before it would be adopted by the state as an official law, but if passed, the bill would take effect July 1st of this year. Many testified for and against the idea in a public hearing for one Washington woman, the proposal is personal. But mostly I'm here being the mom of Trevor Pierce, who at age three was killed by a 17 time repeat drunk driver. Representatives from the Washington Hospitality Association and Washington Wine Institute testified at the hearing and argued things should stay the same in that science supports 0 0.08 as a safe level of consumption. 49 states, including Washington, currently enforce a blood alcohol level of 0.08%. Reporting on scene in Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crimson News. Well, like Brandon mentioned, Utah passed a similar DUI limit law a couple of years ago, and after it took effect back in 2019, a study actually found that the number of crashes involving drivers under the influence dropped. So according to data from the Utah Department of Public Safety, in 2018, more than 18% of crash deaths were alcohol-related. In 2019, that number went down to about 7%. So, of course, that is about an 11% difference. The state also saw nearly 25% of drinkers say that they changed their behavior once that law went into effect. 
So you might be wondering how many drinks it takes to get someone to 0.05 blood alcohol concentration. Well, there's not exactly one standard way to measure it. There are several factors such as a person's age, gender, weight, as well as how much food they've eaten. However, researchers in multiple studies estimate two standard drinks such as a beer or wine in one hour will raise your blood alcohol level to 0.05. The proposed alcohol law comes as state lawmakers also work to increase the punishment for hazing. In 2019, 19-year-old Sam Martinez died after he was hazed at a fraternity at Washington State University. The Whitman County coroner ruled his cause of death as acute alcohol intoxication, otherwise known as alcohol poisoning. Last year, Sam's law went into effect requiring hazing education and documentation of all incidents at universities. Martinez's family is now speaking out in favor of a new bill that would stiffen the punishment for hazing. Cornelius Hawker with our Seattle station has more. What is the message we send to those who haze when the consequences for hazing are so laughable? Jolene Houts of Bellevue spoke passionately at today's hearing for House Bill 1002. It's a bill named in honor of her son, the Sam Martinez Stop Hazing Law. It's toxic. This culture, this history and tradition of hazing as a means of initiating somebody into a group. Currently, hazing is a misdemeanor in Washington. House Bill 1002 would make hazing a gross misdemeanor, and when there's substantial bodily harm, hazing would be a felony. And I'm very hopeful that this legislature, this session, will pass the Sam Martinez Stop Hazing Law. In 2019, Sam was found unresponsive in the basement of his fraternity house. Police say his death came after a night of hazing. I remember him talking about eating whole raw onions whenever they got a pledge education answer wrong. At today's hearing, Sam's friend, Charlie Gartenberg, said after Sam died, he tried to curb hazing on campus to no avail. During my time on the council, I would hear a lot of reports about hazings and like multiple hazing stories in one week or even in just one day. It's devastating to think that Sam's death on that campus, on that very campus, has had such little impact on people's behavior. Despite this perceived lack of change, Sam's mom says she's going to persist, working to make something good come from the death of her only son. My daughter texted me this morning and said Sam would be so proud, and I think that's right. He would want this bill in place to save other young men. Criminal defense lawyers are the only ones opposing this bill, calling it redundant and targeting youth. House Bill 1002, the San Martinez Stop Hazing Law, will be looked at again here at the Capitol in about two weeks. Cornelius Hawker, King 5 News. It's been more than two months since four University of Idaho students were murdered. A longtime coach and friend of one of the victims is working to keep her memory alive. Friends of 20-year-old Zanna Kernodal say she was a joy to have around. Zanna competed in gymnastics, and her coach says they'll spread her memory everywhere they go. Zanna was just an amazing person who loved everybody. Uh, she was a super talented gymnast. If you were with Zanna, you were always laughing. Um, so most of them are just funny memories. Um, she always thought we were going to start a YouTube channel and Instagram pages and become famous. Those who knew Zanna continue to raise funds for the Zanna Kernodal Scholarship Endowment. You can find a link to donate on our website, creme.com. Now, it will likely be months before we learn any new details about the murders of those four students, but attorneys already say that the suspect will not be able to use an insanity plea. The suspect is charged with four counts of first-degree murder. He was a criminal justice PhD candidate at Washington State University. Law experts say Idaho is one of a few states that does not accept a mental condition as a defense. I'm expecting a really multi-layered defense that blames someone else, either another person or, get ready for it, an alter ego. The next time we will see the suspect in court is on June 26th for his preliminary hearing.